Significant Innovation Bootcamp Demo Day. My name is Pedro Oliveira, and together with my colleagues Helena Canhão and Maria João Jacinto, I lead this project that today is going to have a pitch competition here in the context of Ciencia 2020. Let me tell you briefly about our project, which is something that we created when in our research, when I say our research, is joint work with Lazy Lilovic, a professor at Nova School of Business and Economics, and Helena Canhão and other colleagues. In fact, we realized that quite often patients are able to develop very interesting and innovative solutions like the ones that you can see here in the slide. We here are showing just a few examples, for instance, a tale goes worthy, a guy that is known for fixing his own aorta. He was able to develop an aortic support for himself, and by doing that, he was actually able to save the life of many people. You also see, Aaron, uh, you also see Amit Gopher from Israel, and Amit uh, has a different story. After a car accident, he became tetraplegic, and he developed the most sophisticated exoskeleton that is now available in the market. Ug Er, as a researcher from the MIT Media Lab, does a lot of work in uh, developing bionic limbs, and in fact, this started because of his own condition. The first bionic limbs that he developed were for himself. At some point, we realized that this was a very interesting phenomenon, and we wanted to study it, and we needed more data, so we developed a platform so that patients would be able to share with us their stories, their innovations. We did that five years ago, and in a relatively short period of time, we collected about 2,400 medical devices that were developed by patients and informal caregivers from around the globe. We have now a portfolio of 1,300 solutions that have already been medically screened by our medical team. On average, we are getting about three submissions every day. For instance, during this COVID period, we collected over 300 solutions that were specific for COVID-19, including 110 uh, ventilators. Uh, on average now, we get 1.2 million visitors in the site per year. Now, one of the initiatives of the Patient Innovation Project is what we call the Boot Camp. The Boot Camp is an initiative that is funded by EIT Health that uh, is aimed at helping a selected number of entrepreneurs, you will meet them today, to actually further develop the products that they have, bring them to market. So we have been with them in this journey of uh, further helping them what they have already, further developing what they have so that they can launch in the market if they haven't done so. And this is a boot camp that started in Lisbon, here in Lisbon in August. It was actually the only time that we could meet together due to the pandemic. The other two stops had to be moved online. Uh, we were supposed to be in Barcelona at the ESA Business School. This wasn't possible, so we did it online. Also, it was not possible to have the Copenhagen Week uh, in Copenhagen. Uh, so we did it online. But it all started here in Lisbon, and what you will see today is the result of that work, and the result of the work that, of course, these entrepreneurs had done before. This is just some, you know, some snapshots, some pictures of what happened in Lisbon, where uh, we met at Nova School of Business and Economics. Uh, you also some, see some pictures of uh, Hospital da Luz here in Lisbon, and some of the speakers that were with us either uh, remotely or on site at, uh, at Nova. Now, today we are also going to have a pitch competition. So the idea is that each entrepreneur will use the floor for about four minutes, and uh, after that, the jury that I will introduce in a second will ask questions for also a period of four minutes, and uh, then in the end we will decide what is the best project that we have here. And there will be both a prize money, a relatively small prize money, and also uh, this prize here is for the team that uh, will win today uh, this competition. So let me tell you briefly about the members of our jury. We have with us Francisca Light. Francisca, among other things, is the general director of Hospital de Luz Learning Health. Um, 
We have Leid Zinolevich, uh, professor at Nova School of Business and Economics and also the chairman of the Data Science for Social Good Foundation. We have Sofia Rocha, a medical doctor, CTO at Luzia da Saúde and founder of Skin Soul, and also actually a member of Patient Innovation. And we have remotely with us Hugo Silva, Hugo is co-founder and chief innovation officer at Plux, um, medical devices company uh, from, from Portugal. So thank you, first of all, for helping us in this our job today. What we are going to do is to follow this uh, order for the different pitches. My colleague, my colleague uh, Elena Canhão will be controlling the times and uh, leading the way from now on. After the nine presentations, eight of them will be remote because the participants are in Spain, different places in Spain, in fact, Czech Republic, Denmark, France, UK, Belgium, and also Portugal. But also, after, after this, the jury will quickly uh, decide the winner. And uh, at the end of this session, we will have the Minister of Science Technology delivering the award, remotely, if the winner is not present here in the room. So, this is the plan. Again, welcome to our pitch competition to the Patient Innovation Bootcamp Demo Day. And now I'll pass the floor to my colleague. Thank you so much, Pedro. And uh, we'll start with Apdermis. I think Apdermis is already in the Zoom. Hello, Gonzalo. Can you start, please? Yes, one second. Share your slides. Your time is counting. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, we are at Dermis learning about eczema management easily. Uh, atopic dermatitis eczema is an extremely widespread chronic skin disease. It affects many people, as you can see, and one out of them suffers it from a severe form. It doesn't kill you, but it makes your life worse. The patients are constantly looking for information and for new treatments, even if they are under a treatment. They change a lot of doctors and dermatologists because they are not able to build a strong and a long-term relationship with them. The same problem happened to the doctors and also the lack of time on the appointments and in the near future, there is going to be a lack of dermatologists. Our solution for the industry is helping both groups, patients and doctors, building a stronger brand among patients and providing a useful tool for the doctors. This solution is a platform for eczema patients, doctors and experts to help each other to learn how to manage eczema in long term. It is aligned with our vision, helping eczema patients through technology. We are very data driven, so our solution is composed by discussions, knowledge base and data collection. The value we provide is the trust, a platform personalized through technology it lets uh, save time and money for doctors and for patients. And all the information we provide is easy to understand. Our solution, Abdermis, is the product hunt for the, all the eczema stakeholders. And this web uh, tool will be incorporated in our current prototype that is already in the market in a private beta version with uh, 35 uh, patients that are currently co-creating the app together with us. Our solution will facilitate the effective flow of data between all the eczema stakeholders. The market we can reach is 16 billion euros and that is the annual patient spending all of the severe eczema patients who are the 10% ten per ten of all the patients. We are testing different business models like the freemium model, 
sales of licenses, anonymized data access, corporate partnerships, and also tailor it up for different purposes. What makes us different from our competitors is our communication tool. And we have a very multidisciplinary team with IT, marketing and business, and also we count on a health expert in our team. Vamos a hablar sobre Collaboration. We are looking for corporate partnerships on the pharma and cosmetic industry, patient association to co-create and moderate the tool with us, and doctors to keep co-creating co -creating the app. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gonzalo. We have time for two quick questions from the jury. Uh, Sofia, do you want to, to ask sure. Gonzalo? Congratulations, Gonzalo, on the presentation. Um, one quick question. How do you plan to validate the information on the communication tool? Uh, well, uh, we would like that the, I mean, we are, in Portugal, uh, we are in, in, in contact with the patient association and we would like to do the same in other countries that they will be the ones who moderate the, the content into, in, of the tool. Thank you. Can I ask another quick question? Yes, Sorry, very uh, quick one. Second Regarding round, yes. the, um, the way you you want to monetize, uh, you show that you have four models or four uh, stakeholders targeted. How do you plan to monetize it to reach those 16 billion possible markets? Uh, well, uh, right now we are we are testing uh, the corporate uh, partnership. And uh, well, I think that if we build uh, a good uh, uh, relationship with the patients association and we go with the with a pharma or, or cosmetic uh, corporation uh, will be able to to reach all that users in order to get this this uh, this market thank you so much gonzalo and now we thank will you. move on with bill glasses Hello, do you hear me? Uh, yes, but we cannot see you. You, you cannot see me? Oh, 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 oh my. Can you see my screen right now? Can you see my screen? Um, not yet, but yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. You can start. Okay, okay good morning. The project started with my son, Biel. Biel was born with a disease that causes him low vision. He has problems for ascending stairs, crossing streets. He used to suffer falls and collision, and he easily get lost. When his mother and I realized that the eyes of Biel do not adapt to the world, we decided to add the world to his eyes, allowing him to read it by himself. Low vision is a visual impairment that can be corrected with normal glasses or surgery, and it's seven times more common than complete blindness. It has many different causes, and its worst consequences are the mobility issues, which cause dependency and social issues. But people with low vision still see. They still keep some visual capacity. This way, our solution consists in smart glasses that adapt the reality to the remaining visual capacity of people with low vision, improving their mobility and personal auto. For doing so, we use technology from robotics, yay, similar to the one used in autonomous driving, and mixed reality like in gaming, to create an enhanced version of reality, like in this video. Here is the way that somebody with low vision see. They need to be scanning the ground all the time in order to avoid fixed or mobile obstacles. And now we can see the same situation using our solution. First, we have an eye for crossing the street. Now we can see that they don't need to be scanning the ground because if it's there any danger, the system warns of it using graphical signs adapted to the remaining visual capacity of the patient. Moreover, the system includes other uh, complementary functions, like in this case, a zoom window to facilitate with. This is a patient riding, running into an obstacle, and now we, without the glasses, now the, the, we can see the same patient using a prototype that he's able to easily avoid the obstacle. Dogs and canes are still the most used solution for mobility of people with low vision. Dogs are expensive and care required, and canes have very limited functionality. Both of them occupy one hand, 
do not leverage remaining sight and are very stigmatizing. Therefore, for most people with low vision, they do not make a difference worth taking on all these problems. On the other hand, smart glasses make use of remaining sight, including vision improvement functions like zoom. They are both hands-free and are less stigmatizing, as smart glasses are becoming a very common gadget. Comparing with other electronic solutions for low vision, we focus on mobility. We provide unique solutions for mobility, but we also include other functions to provide a complete solution for low vision. There are more than 25 million people with low vision in Europe, and 7 million of them have severe mobility issues. It's a market worth more than 5 billion euros, and we plan to achieve 33 million euros of this market in five years. The glasses will result in optical stores which specialize in low vision, but will configure the device to fit the specific needs of the patient. The retail price will be 4,900 euros, and to uh, assess the value offered by this price, you have to keep in mind that the estimated cost of having low vision is more than 8,000 euros per year, and the device will last a minimum of three years. Moreover, in most of European countries, this price will be reimbursed by public, social, or health systems. The team is composed by experts in, uh, from the technology sector, from the medical, and from the EACAR areas. And we also have a net certain network of business, businesses and industrial partners, and we collaborate with the main patients and professional associations. We have raised more than 800,000 euros in public and private funds so far to develop a prototype and to start industrialization. Now we are looking for the next round of 1 million euros to finance product launch in Spain and Denmark and to expand to the rest of Europe. All of that to let people like Yale to be free to move as any other. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. Late, do, do you want to, um, to ask a uh, question? Is this working? Yeah. So thanks a lot for your presentation. A wonderful solution. Does it, did you already test it with, your, uh, with Beal? Well, actually, we test with Bill, but Bill is not. Uh, I'm sorry. Is, let's say he's not uh, our, our main tester because uh, the feedback that we can have from Bill is not as good as from uh, other people. We have been testing uh, the, the device in, uh, in the Faculty of Optometry uh, in the uh, University of Barcelona, of, of the UPC, University Polytechnic of Barcelona. And we tested with uh, with many patients so far, uh, and we have uh, we didn't finish yet the, the test, but we have uh, promising results. Uh, Eighty percent of the patients uh, confirm uh, improvement of mobility. And do did you test by giving people and seeing whether they stick with the solution? Do they use it continuously, or is it just one off? No, no, yet because uh, of ethical reasons, we cannot uh, just give the device for the people who who use it uh, by their own. We need to, to test it in a control environment because we need to be sure that there will be, there is no any safety uh, risk. So uh, we are testing in. I'm saying another. You can see this is this is the lab that we are using now. It's a lab that we built with the funding of EAT Health actually. And uh, this app is specifically for testing uh, mobility problems where we can simulate uh, any kind of uh, mobility situations, but we can do it in a, in a controlled environment. And, and just the last question, what is your patent uh, for? There, there is a patent pending sign on your slides. Yes, yes, what yes, is it for? Yes, uh, we patented both the methods and the system. And uh, well, it's actually it's patent pending. We, we filed the patent uh, two months ago. Uh, where? In the uh, in European Patent uh, Office. Okay. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. And You're now welcome. we move on to CF Hero. Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Hi. Hi, how are you? So maybe just wait a little bit to to see you and then you can start with your pitch uh do you see uh, our page our presentation uh, not yet but we are waiting a little bit more mm -hmm.
Although I can see she's... Okay. Uh, she yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Hello, how are you? So you can start, please. <clears throat> uh, so do you see the presentation, right? Because I see only uh, two of us. We are seeing you. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so let's start. I will tell you a story. 20 years ago, I was finishing my high school exams with intravenous antibiotics and two hours long, boring lung inhalation therapy for every single day. And I was wondering what to do next. All statistics show I have only five more years to live. Is there a future for me? Should I have a family? Those were my thoughts. And those are still worries for young people with a genetic lead to disease, cystic fibrosis, CF, which I have. Even today, with all medicine progress since 2000, the average age at death for CF is under 29 years in the EU. I have lost dozens of my friends. But I have survived to my 39, and I realize that it's the patient himself who is the greatest expert very often. The biggest difference in my case was very intensive inhalation lung therapy, demanding boring thing that patients usually hate. In 2016, I joined a father of a little CF girl who started a project of a playful mobile app for CF youngsters because therapy can be fun, and funny therapy can save lives. How to make therapy fun? Well, first you need great teammates, like Barbara. Hello, my name is Barbara. I'm a software engineer with a big pharma background, and I'm a technical lead uh, of CF Hero project, which we are doing with our team consisting of experts, including CF doctors and physiotherapists. Uh, we get a lot of support to realize our project for young CF patients. Because as a teenager, you are struggling many things and aspects of your life, and no one should tell you what to do, right? And there are much more things you have to fight with when you are a teenager with cystic fibrosis. In this time, the therapy drops a lot, and health condition go quickly down with no way back. We want to help and improve all these terrible statistics because we believe every patient can be a hero. CF Hero is a non-profit mobile app which focuses on building habit of daily inhalations and also provide the education with more tips and tricks. This all is done through the gamification and play playful design. The most important section is for the inhalation therapy. During the session, you can focus on breathing and follow the pattern that's how you can increase the efficiency. You earn virtual coins, and this helps you focus on doing the only one thing is needed, the inhalation, and do it right. These coins can be spent on improving your avatar or by a, uh, by a funny comic stories written in the teenage language with tips and tricks. CF Hero is available in Czech Republic and in Slovak Republic. It's free and it's helping young CF patients and their parents. We have first data. These were presented at the European Cystic Fibrosis Society Conference in Liverpool. And we have direct feedback from patients and their parents and from hospitals and doctors too. And we are ready to bring We are looking for partners and donors to make the app available country by country. With cooperation with local Portugal patient organization, we would like to bring the app to Portugal too. So uh, please contact us if you are able to help us with this mission. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Thank you. so much. Thank you. Francisca, do you want to the question? Uh, hi, thank you so much for a wonderful presentation, a wonderful product, and I'm so glad that you're using it and that it's making a difference for many people in the world. Uh, I'm, uh, the, 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 all the slides were very fast. How many uh, kids, teenager kids, uh, use it right now, and how many keep using it after a first attempt? Well, we have a, a cystic fibrosis is a rare disease. There are 600 people with this in Czech Republic. There are about 400 people with this disease in Portugal. 
So it's about uh, 200 in Czech Republic and about less than 100 uh, in Slovak Republic when it's even uh, less people in the, in the Slovakian. But they, they keep using it once they try the app? Do they keep using it? Yeah, we have the app designed for about two, three months with the content there. And we are now uh, designing a clinical study to, to really uh, validate this. It will be a prospective uh, single blind multi center study in the faculty hospitals in, in the Czech capital in Prague and in uh, other capital uh, in Berlin. Okay. Uh, uh, the, the app is free. How do you intend to, to survive uh, if, if you're not going to have the, the users pay for it? Yeah, uh, that's, that's the question. What, what are you when you are doing something for 300 people in, in your, in your uh, republic? But CF Hello is something uh, like from a likeable initiative to sustainable social impact platform or startup. We are uh, now funding from grants, from awards we have won, uh, of course from private donations, and uh, now we are in some uh, talkings with uh, Roche, pharma, pharma company, that is producing the inhalation medicine for uh, this rare disease. And the other part of our team is in other Roche accelerator. So maybe there is uh, some another uh, possibility. Okay, great. Thank you so much and good luck. Thank you so much. Thank Congratulations. You. And now we have heuristics. And I think, hello. Hello, Elena. Hello, how are you? Yes, yes. Uh, we are Fine. hearing you. And now, yes, thanks. On. So uh, you can start, please. Uh, give me a sec. Do you want to share your, your screen? Okay, yes. Yeah. It's perfect. It working? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> so let's start. Uh, did you know that the 54% of misidentification errors inside hospitals are caused because identification bracelets? That's because the uh, printing issues, uh, they wear off actually when the patient are using those and some of the patients refuse to use them. So basically they take them away and they throw. And also some patients can swap them. So they, they take them away and swap between the patients. A normal hospital uh, usually uh, prints like 1,000 uh, bracelets per day with a cost of almost one euro per each. So basically the identification bracelets are not accurate enough and are super expensive. So that's why we developed the fastest, safest, and most accurate way to identify patients, biometrics. Our solution uh, hasn't got anything to do with the biometric sol solution of the smartphones. Our technology is far more accurate. Basically, we first scan the patient fingerprint, then our artificial intelligence uh, gets the measures on the fingerprint and creates a pattern. That pattern gets encrypted and we save it in, the, in our server. And then we link that encrypted code with the patient's information inside the hospital's own server. That's why we are compliant with GDPR. We don't, we don't have access to the patient's data. We just focus on encryption and artificial intelligence. Uh, those are one of the main differentiators from our competitors. Basically, our solution gets a smart, a smarter with each fingerprint because actually with each scan, our solution gets smarter, faster and safer rather than our, our competitors that they just install their solution in the hospital server. Also, our solution is totally scalable because we are providing them with a cloud solution that uh, connects like the hospitals, helping with the interoperability. Our solution is simple and scalable, as I told you before. We can uh, integrate directly in the hospital's working program or we can create an additional identification pro program for them. Then for the hardware, it's just a plug and play with a USB to the computer or with a technical tablet. Uh, talking with our customers, we discovered three main areas. Basically reception to identify the patients when they come to the hospital and operating and recovering rooms to identify the patients before, during and after the operation. 
We are also working with ambulance companies to identify unconscious and our documented patients, just scanning their fingerprint in a matter of seconds. And we make a pilot with DIA, which is one of the largest ambulance companies in Spain. Actually, they love the solution so much that they even they invested on us. Uh, we created a customer-based business model. This means that uh, the hospital will have to pay per identification and we have like a special packages for them and a renting of the devices. This means that they just are going to pay a monthly fee for the devices and in, in case one device get damaged, we can replace it in a matter of days. We have a super uh, professional team with some PhDs in artificial intelligence, big data, uh, doctors, like I don't want to go deep on that right now. Uh, we also have experts in all the fights um, and we have two signed pilots with one of the largest ambulance companies in Spain and with one of the largest public hospitals in Spain, Osakidech, in the Basque Country. We also are pending some pilots with private and public hospitals in Spain and we've been in talks with two of the main largest private hospitals in Portugal, Hospital Daluz and Luciadas. Uh, we also have been part of some of the largest uh, healthcare acceleration programs in, in Europe uh, in Hungary, Czech Republic, Portugal, and non-healthcare acceleration programs. Uh, we have international partners uh, that they help us enter the market and also uh, deal with the pilots. And that's all. If you, you want, I have like an, issue, an additional Q&A slide. So I will be more than happy to receive all your questions. Thanks. Thank you so much, Anton. Uh, maybe now I, I call Hugo because Hugo, can you see Hi. us and hear us? Perfectly. Yes. Hello. Hello. Good. So thank you for the presentation. It's a, a very interesting project. Uh, I have a couple of questions, namely um, now in COVID time, everything that uh, has a touch based interface is kind of a problem and, and biometrics is, is one of those <laughs> uh, kind of <laughs> problematic modalities. Um, are you only considering this as an interface? Do you plan on using things that are contactless like facial recognition and others? So how do you see biometrics in, in the short term uh, being applied? Okay, uh, first of all, face recognition doesn't work for uh, health uh, things because actually uh, if you have like a, maybe a car accident or whatever, your your face is going to be like inflamed or with blood or everything. And in case a change happen, it's almost impossible to identify. And this makes more difficult even with the max. But actually our, our lectors and our devices are rubbered. This means that are water and dust proof. So basically when a patient put the fingerprint, uh, uh, the health staff can clean it just with, a, with an alcohol like tissue and everything is going to be like sanitary proof. So we don't have like any matter with that. Mm -hmm. uh, another question I had was regarding your business model. You mentioned the uh, uh, renting of devices, this, which is quite cost intensive, at least in, in, in the beginning. Um, is, is this uh, something that's really critical for, for your growth path or because the devices now are, are commodities? Uh, is the device proprietary to you or do you integrate from a third party and, and what is the rough yeah. cost of the device for, for an integrator? Yeah, great question. Actually, uh, these devices are one of the most uh, accurate devices in the world. They come from the United States and they are actually used by the FBI. Uh, we are using these devices because we, to train the artificial intelligence, we need like super accurate fingerprints because, for example, if an accident happens, and the fingerprint is damaged, with these devices we can identify it. Uh, but uh, we are using a, a renting model because it's better for hospitals and better for us. Because, for example, the static device has a cost of around 150 euros and the, the tablet uh, costs a, around 1,000 euros or, or nine, 900, actually. So basically, uh, the hospital rather pay in that cost, they will pay, imagine, like 10 or 15 euros per device each month. And in case it gets damaged, we can uh, change it in a matter of days. That, that's why we are using like a renting model, because we don't want the hospital to invest a lot of money. And actually with a little investment, they can run a pilot. Uh, we actually have uh, in the third slide, I think that is this one, sorry. Oops. Um, Anson, we yeah, don't yeah. have much time, so... <laughs>
Yeah, it's just like a, like a pilot for a hospital. Just it, it will take just a thousand euros, basically with three static devices and one tablet and ten thousand identifications per month, which is nothing compared to the cost of the identification bracelets. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Now we go to on wheels, and we need a little bit of time to to show on wheels. Uh, are you there? Yes. Joe, yes. how are you and Robin? I'm fine. Robin, are you here too? Yeah, you can start, please. Yes, but I need to hear Robin too because we are doing it together. We are seeing Robin. And can you hear? hear? Yes, yes. Okay. okay, so you can start. Thank you. Hello, Lisbon. We are uh, Robin and Joke from On Wheels, and gonna, I'm gonna start by telling you my own story. In 2013, I was in a rehab hospital where I met Michiel. I had a big surgery and he had a terrible accident. I took him under my wheelchair wings because he was a wheelchair virgin. After a while, we were allowed an evening out because we booked enough progress. <coughs> But um, when you have a few drinks, you also need a toilet. And it wasn't difficult to locate the place, but it was on the second floor with stairs. Our evening out was ruined and we had to return to the hospital with wet wheelchairs. A few days later, the idea of On Wheels was born and we promised to do better and to get cities on wheels for everyone. And we didn't do it for the both of us. We know this can impact 5 million wheelchair users in Europe. And worldwide, there are one in six people suffering from reduced mobility. So our goal is to get freedom for everyone, also for wheelchair users, and to get all the cities on wheels. How do we do this? We want that our users can rely on our data. And that's why we check all the information that is used in the On Wheels app. You will not find toilets on the second floor with stairs in our app. Our users get to experience the freedom to choose where to go again. That is something you lose when you end up in a wheelchair. And that is what On Wheels can give back right now. But it doesn't stop by giving information. We also work together with cities. They can use the data we collect and work together with us. And then they can make the difference by really change the world for wheelchair users and people with reduced mobility. At this moment, On Wheels has two platforms. We have a free app that everyone can use. And we also have a management platform uh, more specific for cities. Our app has some amazing features. Uh, you can create a personal profile and see only what is possible for you. There's also an interactive map with more than 20 uh, categories to choose from. And if you want more information, you just click on the icon and you get a lot of uh, detailed and verified information. Our management platform. Our management platform uh, is, is built for cities uh, and you get uh, all the data of your city in one place. Uh, you can create lists of all the data and in the future we're also going to add uh, that you can make maps and charts. We have an amazing team uh, with a lot of uh, wheelchair experience, also architectural backgrounds and, uh, and a whole team of IT experts. In the last five years, uh, on Wheels has uh, around 1,000 uh, people using the app each day, um, and we have more than uh, 34,000 verified locations in around 507 cities in 20, 28 different countries. Our main focus is in Belgium now, but we want to grow. We also have a lot of uh, amazing partners that helped us develop the first two versions of the app. How can you help us? You can download the app and share your favorite places with other users. Uh, as a city, you can also work together with us and uh, use the data platform 
so you can make a, CP, a CPL news for everyone. You can also become our partner and sponsor and help uh, wheelchair users become more independent. And if we make this happen, we are sure that people that go out for the first time can celebrate without worries. Thank you so much, Yoki and Robin. Um, Sophia, please. Um, congratulations for, for the project and also for the presentation. Um, a question, a quick one. Uh, when we, you talked about how to become, to turn cities better, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Because I think it's really, really interesting. Um, the data we gather are data about um, the width of the doorstep or uh, the width of the, the door of um, all the locations in a city. So if we can give this data back to uh, a city, they can choose to um, make the less accessible places more accessible. And then you can really go and change a city. Then you can make uh, little ramps for the, the least accessible places, and then you can make a city more accessible. It's just a, a small example to give. We have lots of them, but not enough time to explain them. Sure, so you can be also a validation tool for cities, for instance, to be friendly for wheelchair users, for instance, like in a way. Imagine for a hospital or for a, a, the variety of hospitals and healthcare centers, that uh, might be a, a partner for, for yourselves? Yes, of course. Yeah. Thank you. No Thank you so much. Now we move, move on to Step Up. Hello, Step Up. Are you there? We need to, to wait a little bit. Hello, how are you? Uh, can you hear us? Yes, yes, I'm sharing okay. my screen now. Okay, we are not seeing the, the screen. Yes, yes. Ready now. yes, you can start, thank you. Okay, uh, hello everyone. I am Karthik, a CEO of Step Up Health. Sorry, I think I will change my slides quickly. Yeah, sorry for the delay. Hi everyone, I'm Karthik, a CEO of Step Up Health and we are improving the life of a COPD patient. And let's have a uh, glance at the life of a COPD patient. Imagine having a cold or cough and not being able to go out and being so tired. And COPD patient's life is 10 times worse than that. And also it really reduces their self-confidence. And from a doctor's and the practitioner's perspective, and data collected from the patients at home is very low quality and very less. And it is because when the doctor asks the patients, how did you feel yesterday or last week, that response given by the patients is often very subjective and it, it makes the uh, treatment strategies very, very challenging. And it can also uh, result in hospitalization due to the wrong information. And our value proposition is that we are radically improving the way it has been monitored at the current situation uh, by enabling people to continuously monitor their breathing pattern, uh, which will give a objective data for the doctors and also the, the doctors can better assess the treatment strategies. And for the patients, it improves their self-confidence and also self-awareness on how their lifestyle affects their health conditions. And our product comes in the three different forms. It can be uh, wear around the chest as a strap, or it can be the medical grade patch also integrated with the T-shirt. And we have a software to uh, allow the users to track their progress. And our future is in essence, we are making the pneumography very simple and convenient at, uh, for accessing at any settings. And we measure the breathing frequency and depth of each breath and also the user activity level. Our market entry strategy is to get into the pilot telemedicine programs in Portugal and Denmark. It's because these countries really embraces the uh, digital health and also health innovations. 
and our business model is based on the sales for the device and also subscription model of uh, 25 euros per month. Our traction is that we have a proof of concepts established and also we have established uh, uh, partnerships with the uh, hospitals in Portugal and Slovakia and we are part of the patient innovation bootcamp and we are also in getting in touch with the Danish public hospitals. Uh, our next step is we are planning for uh, market entry in a third quarter in 2022 uh, but our immediate focus is to get into the uh, validate our market and also product and user needs. So we are a uh, group of passionate people extremely you know, skilled in our each individual domains and we would love to uh, bring this uh, innovation for the people. Uh, let's improve the lives of the COPD patients together and you can reach out to me in LinkedIn or email. We would love to talk to you if you find our product interesting and innovation relevant to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kartik. Um, uh, Francisca, please. Uh, hi, thank you for the presentation. Um, have you uh, done any clinical trial or clinical study already using your your product? Uh, no, we haven't uh, done the clinical trial, but we have validated our data with the uh, state of art uh, uh, technology for benchmarking our uh, data. So we are pretty confident that it will really solve the problem, but the clinical trial we are it's in the pipeline. We are getting in touch with the hospitals to start the process. But we are now in the process of a preclinical study assessment. Thank you so much. And now we have Ali here from UV Mask. Ali, thank you so much for coming. So should I start? You need to. Yes. Okay. Is that yours? Yes. yes. Good morning. Oh, sorry. Uh, good morning. My name is Ali Boudiaf, and I'll be presenting the ultraviolet respiratory protection mask. And this is my story. There's no sound. I discovered Lisbon two years ago, and I fell in love with this city. So, I decided to move, and enjoy life in Portugal. I also decided, to go back to school and do the Lisbon MBA. Then, COVID-19 hit in March, and I found myself flopped. Life has suddenly changed. Globally, we may be still nearer the beginning than the end of this pandemic, but we are continuing to see the rate of healthcare worker and nurses infections rise and to receive increasing reports of the deaths of nurses. We have Recent studies have shown that COVID-19 virus is airborne. It can travel up to 8 meters, carried by droplets, when a person sneezes. Surgical masks can filter particles smaller than 10 microns, while the size of the COVID-19 virus is about 0.1 micron. Ligier and I decided to put together a team of engineers, dentists, medical doctor and pharma marketer to come up with a new solution. And, we created, the Ultraviolet Respiratory Protection Mask, which I am going to present to you. All right, uh, I hope you recognize the character. It was me. So the three features of this product are instant inhaled air purification based on ultraviolet LEDs, real-time monitoring using IoT sensors to monitor the, um, the, uh, the physical uh, characteristic of the, uh, of the patients, and uh, a reusable uh, mask that, is, uh, that has an ergonomic design. Plenty of uh, articles have been uh, already uh, published regarding UVC. And this is the design of the mask. It has two pieces. And the value proposition is that we provide the smartest way to keep you safe with no waste. We 3D printed the proto 
uh, for less than 40 uh, euros. Uh, the weight is less than 50 grams, and we believe that the production cost can be drastically reduced. We tested it with uh, a nurse, and she liked it. She says there's no fog on the glasses so far. We believe there's uh, a potential market for non disposable protection masks um, in the medical applications. Right, so the next one. So what are you doing this? Um, we do this because we care. Uh, we would like to provide healthcare workers with a highly efficient respiratory protection mask, and we believe we can do this better than uh, the disposable masks. We are uh, a small startup so far, two business partners. We are both PhDs in microwave and optoelectronics uh, with more than 20 years of industrial experience. We are at the early stage. We are bootstrapping. Uh, the business model is medtech, B2B, and B2C. We are working towards the first milestone to create a viable prototype and a solid business plan. And we started the French pattern applications. So um, that's it for my presentation. And I will finish this by putting the mask so you can see how it looks like. Thank you so much, Shami. Lights. Do you? But what? I don't know whether this works. So thank you for the presentation. Very good one. And uh, I hope it's uh, not going to be needed as much. <laughs> not because of you, but because of everybody else. Uh, and uh, so the, I have one or two quick questions. So first one is, uh, why is it needed all these IoT things and sensors? Um, because we would like to monitor um, the health worker when she wears the masks especially uh, measuring the uh, oxygen level in the blood in case uh, after a prolonged time of using this mask, there's less uh, oxygen getting into, in, in, into the, to her system. So uh, it's, it's a way of, of keeping the, the health worker under uh, good conditions. So I'm sorry for my ignorance, but you can measure the level of oxygen within the blood through the mask? There's a, a, a small electronic device called oximeter it's a, it's a diode that emits a signal, and we me measure the reflection on the skin, okay. and it will give us the... Uh, I think I have it here. It works on the hand or on the finger. Yeah. It's just a matter to put that device close okay. to a vein that can detect the, um, the signal. Thanks for this. And what is your IP protection for, intended? The IP protection, intellectual property protection, that you said that you're preparing an application in France? Yes, uh, France. we are using a, 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 an innovative approach on how we use uh, and bias the ultraviolet LEDs inside that assure that it is um, killing the virus. So it, it's, a, it's a new way of, of using the LEDs inside the mask. That's the part we are trying to, to patent. No more questions. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Pedro wants thank, something. Thank you so much. We have two more teams to go, so now we have WeWalk. Hello, how are you? Can you Hello. hear us? Thank you. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Do you have slides to share? Yes, I will, and I will share it. Okay. And then you can start. Thank you. Yes. Okay, perfect. I'm so happy to be here today. Uh, we have been listening amazing technologies. And uh, we all witness how technology, how fast technology advances every single day. And we even speak about self-driving cars, flying autonomous vehicles, etc. Here is the question. Although technology has advanced so much, as a blind person, why am I still using just a plain stick? Hello, my name is Kirshat. I am blind from birth and I'm co-founder of WeWalk Smart Cane for the visual impaired. It was two years ago, I was in New York to give a speech at the United Nations and uh, I was going to my hotel. While I was going to my hotel, I was using my traditional white cane and holding it with my one hand at the same time, I, I was uh, holding my smartphone in order to check the GPS direction. At the same time, I had to pull my luggage 
but I have two hands are and, and my two hands are occupied and I use my these three fingers for pulling my luggage and all of in this chaos I bumped into a pole and right now that's why you can see some scars on my front head this is not only my problem according to world health organization there are 253 million visually impaired and according to european blind union 75 percent of visually impaired are unemployed this situation causes 28 billion pounds loss of the UK economy. We believe, we believe we, uh, these statistics must be changed. And the first step to change these statistics is to provide full and equal participation opportunity to social life for visually impaired. That's why we created WeWalk. And uh, we walk, we walk uh, detect overhead obstacles and alerts its users. Also, uh, as a second feature, we walk can be paired with our smartphones, and uh, it means I don't need to hold my smartphone anymore uh, while I'm getting navigation, etc. I can put it into my pocket and I can keep managing my uh, process, uh, my smartphone over WeWalk's touchpad or microphone with the voice assistant of the WeWalk. As a third feature, the, uh, this I like this feature the most, WeWalk can gain new features with the software updates. WeWalk can integrate with the smart city solutions. Uh, for example, right now I can check which bus is approaching the bus stop while I am waiting at the bus stop. Uh, and uh, our vision is to make we walk a personal hub for visually impaired where they can reach all sorts of information and technology over we walk and luckily we are not alone in this journey uh, we are partnering we are collaborating with the imperial college london uh, with the support of the uk government moreover we walk is a microsoft ai for good company it means we are collaborating with the Microsoft to increase the AI capacity of the WeWalk. Uh, WeWalk has been chosen as one of the best inventions of 2019 by Time Magazine, also um, awarded by the uh, Thomas Edison Foundation. And uh, WeWalk was in the news over more than uh, 250 different sources. But most importantly, uh, uh, the most important award, uh, I, we believe, uh, is to create an impact all over the world. Uh, and and uh, to, to, to succeed that, we are partnering with the largest uh, blind organizations, such as RNIB from the UK, Lighthouse Guild from the USA, or RSB from Australia. And uh, uh, so far, VWALK is used in 37 different countries uh, by the visually impaired. Uh, and uh, we are looking for more uh, opportunities, more collaborations with the private sectors, as well as government municipalities, because municipalities buy WeWalk and distribute to their citizens or and governments as well. And some private companies are making their own social uh, awareness campaigns with the WeWalk. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Thank you so much. Uh, Ugo? Yes. Uh, thanks for the presentation. It, it's quite uh, interesting. Um, how do you see this uh, scaling up uh, and, and being industrialized? I see that you are quite advanced already. So um, w what's the, the next step for, for this technology in, in, in your opinion? In, in, and, and also the, uh, uh, comparatively to the competition, what's the, the, the main bonus? If you could develop mm -hmm. a little bit more on that. Mm -hmm. I can start with the competition. Um, we have some indirect competitors, uh, for example, uh, Sunu. Sunu is a band, it's not a smart cane, and uh, they are uh, also 
providing uh, some uh, technologies for the visually impaired to make them more mobile. Uh, and uh, uh, but but we walk is differentiate itself with the uh, it, its uh, technology because we believe that a visually impaired people doesn't need any extra device because as a blind person i am already using white cane and also i am holding i am using i'm carrying my smartphone i cannot uh, give up to use it uh, and we don't want to add one more device into visually impaired people's lives instead that we built uh, a smart cane because visually impaired people are already using white cane. We thought that instead of holding it just a plain stick, uh, since we are in 2020 right now, uh, we can build that kind of technology. And uh, right now we, we see we got very positive feedback from our users as I stated uh, in presentation in, in 37 different countries, uh, we are in the right direction. Uh, in terms of the technology uh, development, um, right now we are developing um, AI technology for mobility trainers uh, because uh, there are mobility trainers. These people are teaching how to use white cane to visually impaired people. However, they cannot uh, follow. They cannot uh, monitor their students. Uh, you know, after the class, they don't know how am I using my white cane? Am I writing randomly, right and left, etc., or I, am I using properly? So, with the, uh, our AI technology, we will provide uh, feedback to both users as well as their uh, trainers how they are using their white canes and. Uh, and also we will provide feedback to improve their white cane usage as well. So we are working on that kind of uh, development. And also we will be uh, in this series A round, round uh, in 2021. And that's why uh, uh, we will scale up our technology in uh, both European Union, uh, USA and uh, Australia deeply. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now the last but not the least, 11 else, the, the last team that we have here in the competition. Hello. Hello, Elena. I'm going Hello. to... Hello. How are I'm, you, Jean-Michel? I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, I'm sharing my, my screen. Do you see my screen? Yes, yes. You can start. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Jean-Michel Edreux, I'm a Crone and uh, Ostomate patient. Uh, as you listen, I'm not a fantastic uh, English speaker. Uh, I'm a French guy, but uh, I'm trying to present to you the 11 Health project called uh, Alfred Smart Care. Uh, this is Michael, my, uh, my friend and founder of uh, 11 Health. Uh, he was a Crohn patient with a severe form of the disease. Uh, unfortunately, in May 2020, Michael uh, didn't win the last fight. Uh, we met 10 years ago. We have had the same uh, passion for patient advocacy. And uh, our mission, our uh, plan, our uh, idea is uh, improving the quality of life of ostomy patients and people who are living with uh, chronic disease. Uh, like Crohn, like uh, colitis, like uh, colorectal cancer, uh, endometriosis, polyposis, and so on. And for uh, this, uh, we use the technology, the data, and patient uh, support network. Uh, our uh, solution, our approach is adapted for the main type of ostomy. The first one is uh, ileostomy, created from the, the small uh, intestine with uh, liquid feces. And the second is colostomy, created from the large intestine. And the main difference with the other is the formed stool. The problem, uh, the cost of uh, readmission per patient is high. Um, 14,000 uh, euros uh, per patient. Why? 
uh, because uh, too many patients are uh, first readmitted to hospital for dehydration, for skin complication, for renal uh, failure, and much more visit than average the other disease. Uh, the ostomy market and ostomy care, it's a huge market. It's um, 25 billion of dollars in the world. And uh, sadly, uh, with Michael, uh, we haven't uh, seen much innovation in ostomy bag and ostomy care. And, and for us, uh, too many patients are staying isolated. Too many patients didn't know how the de dehydration could be dangerous for them. And too many patients suffering alone. And now uh, we want to stop this. We are in 2020, not to the prehistoric period. And uh, that's why we want to de deliver a digital health solution uh, for chronically ill patients and ostomate. Uh, by creating sensor into a medical device and then uh, to collect information to have a better understanding, patient need, unmet need, and understand and improve the, the patient pathway. Um, our solution is more than a set of sensors. It's a solution for each stakeholder in the ostomate patient pathway. And our pro program, sorry, will act a crucial care management tool for all stages of the patient journey, before the surgery, during the hospital, and in recovery at home. And uh, what 11 L6? Um, we want to find an investor for 11 L capital and find a partnerships. Uh, the past eight years, like you see here, uh, we work a lot, we created strip sensor, we built our uh, own uh, smart bag and wafer, developed all digital solution, we clinically validated everything and we patented it. No. Uh, now, for the final one, we, we need um, uh, to raise money for initial commercialization. In the five next years, uh, we would like uh, to provide our uh, program and product uh, to 26,000 uh, patients in US and in Europe. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, attention. If you need more details uh, for figure or market, uh, I'm there. Thank you so much, Jean-Michel. Sophia, do, do you want to ask a question? Sure. Jean-Michel, first, uh, thank you more than congratulations for being here, and I'm really sorry for Michael. Uh, your solution seems to be really um, impactant, and you have a full idea of the problem. So could you please explain us a little bit more of your vision on the expansion of this? Because it's being a medical device is always hard. So can you give us a little bit a blink of the future? And the, the next... Uh, you want to know the next stage? Yes. Uh, to yes. expand. Uh, yes. We 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 finished the, the clinical trials uh, in US with Cleveland Clinic, and uh, we are uh, ongoing to uh, connect uh, all the codification with uh, insurance to the US. Um, in France, uh, we are uh, started. We are start uh, clinical trials with uh, several uh, CHU in France to validate, validate uh, the process. And when uh, we validate it with hospital, we have to go uh, to commission for the reimbursement for the patient. And that's it's almost uh, two or three years. And uh, the, the aim of this clinical trial in France is to uh, get the reimbursement for all the patients. Reimbursement for the product and reimbursement for the, the program with the patient coach. Uh, will, uh, the patient coach will be able to support the patient before the surgery and after the surgery. Can I ask just a short question too? Uh, regarding the price, is it similar to the normal bags or is it much ex more expensive? No, it's, it's more expensive. It's not the same product. We don't want to be uh, a company uh, who manufacture bags. Uh, we have a lot of services 
around uh, the bag. It's not just a product, it's really a program, a very good program uh, for uh, all, pa all new patients. Uh, you know, uh, we, we suffer uh, a lot with Michael uh, regarding our uh, disease and uh, with the ostomy. And we don't want that the new, the young uh, patient uh, who discover the, the disease um, uh, life, uh, have the same life that, than us. We want to improve that. And that's why we can compare the price of the product, but it's a global solution. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jean-Michel. And after these brilliant nine presentations, we will have a winner and our jury is voting. Uh, and I ask Pedro. So I would like to invite the members of the jury for a short meeting here. And if you wait, the ones that are at home or here in the auditorium, in a few minutes, we will be back with the winner. Okay, but please be <laughs> quick. Please don't leave us. Yes, we will be as quick as possible. You have two minutes to, to decide. Just two minutes. And after this session, we have a, a lunch. A, I think I can speak in Portuguese. Um, nós, depois desta sessão, que vai terminar há, há uma hora, uh, temos o almoço e voltamos depois, como sabem, às duas horas com, com mais sessões. Um, a sessão das duas horas será uma presencial, mas terão cinco sessões simultâneas online. Podem encontrar os links um, no, no site do Encontro Ciência e uh, por streaming teremos a divulgação da, da sessão que ocorrerá aqui no, no Auditório 1 e todas as outras sessões têm links próprios que são feitas as, as ligações através de Zoom. Uh, e que podem encontrar uh, na página do, do, do site. Depois teremos ainda mais duas sessões plenárias que decorrerão aqui no Auditório 1, serão sessões únicas uh, e ao fim do dia o encerramento uh, da, do encontro que será feito hoje ao fim do dia pelo Sr. Presidente da, da República. Let's wait uh, one minute more. Um, we are waiting for, for the jury. And as you, as you saw, we, we saw some presenta presentations from patient entrepreneurs and this uh, type of innovations that are developed by the patients are now uh, quite important because the, the patients feel the, the needs and then they can develop and think in some solutions. And in the patient innovation site, we have um, around 2,000 innovations that were developed uh, by, by patients. Some of them, them uh, reached the market because some of them are patient entrepreneurs, but there are also some strategies, other products that you can see, and uh, this can help uh, lots of people. And please think that the patients and the caregivers uh, feel some needs that the conventional medicine cannot uh, solve. And with that, they can improve their lives and uh, the lives of others. So look the www.patientinnovation.com 
and you can see uh, how these brilliant uh, solutions can help all of us. And I think they are returning now. Sorry, a more minute. Eu penso que estão, que estão já a voltar. Aproveito para lembrar de novo que durante a tarde vamos ter várias sessões uh, do, aqui no Encontro de Ciência e vamos continuar a perceber como é que a ciência em Portugal pode contribuir uh, para uma Europa mais resiliente, mais social, mais digital, mais global. Uh, Logo à tarde teremos também a participação de Robert Langer e de Eric Van Nippel numa sessão como recuperar um, com mais ciência toda a Europa e, e, e eles são um, speakers que têm contribuído bastante para com novas tecnologias ou com novas teorias, nomeadamente com o User Innovation e uh, o Robert Langer com uh, a biotecnologia, a trazerem-nos inovações. E depois, ao fim do dia, Elvira Fortunato e o Pedro Conceição irão fazer as suas palestras e a sua apresentação para fecharmos com chave de ouro este encontro. We have the jury now. I think you took too long. Because it was interesting. Yes, interesting, but people are waiting. So who will announce the, the winner? So, the jury has reached the conclusion. In fact, in a way, you are all winners. Uh, that means that uh, all of you will actually get a very nice piece of crystal like the one that I am holding now. It's crystal from Portugal. Very nice piece, I can guarantee. But we have uh, not just one big winner, we have two big winners, the jury decided that instead of uh, giving the prize to one team, uh, two teams should divide the prize, the money prize. Uh, that means that uh, 1,000 euros will be divided by two teams. And the two winners are BL glasses and UV masks. So thank you all. Congratulations to all. Let me now call our Ministry of Science and Technology to say a few words and to congratulate all of you.
let me um, congratulate all of you and, and certainly the patient innovation team. The work of this final session is just a small sample of all the work over, done over the last uh, more than 10 years. And certainly this is a continuous um, effort that you should all very, very proud. I believe, as Pedro mentioned, all of you are winners of a long trajectory that will not close here, will certainly continue. And my, my role is essentially to support you, to support the work you are doing, certainly the, the, the team beyond, behind the patient innovation that uh, certainly will keep this um, for longer and for many, many more years. Thank you very much for your commitment. Thank you. Thank you so much.